for the hippo. Say what? Oh, too many. <laughs> too many buttons right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the hippo say what episode? This what happens. You're listening to the Help Me with HIPAA podcast, where HIPAA and humor collide to make learning fun. Your delightful hosts are Donna Grindle and David Sims. Relax, HIPAA help is on the way. Welcome to episode 285 of the Help Me with HIPAA podcast. My name is David Sims of HIPAA for MSPs and Security First IT. And joining me is Donna Grindle of Carden. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, David. How are you? Eh, I'm, you know, getting close to <laughs> feeling like I can get in control again. Are you really? Yeah, close. It but you know, long. it's probably it's you know it's probably just a fluke. Mm-hmm. You know, when you have a really productive day and you get a lot of stuff off your list and you feel really good, yeah. Until you look at the list after you're done. And, you know, I got to check everything off, but didn't look at what was left. Kind of gave myself a break from seeing what was actually there. Yeah. It's it's good to have your list broken up so you don't see the whole list. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. you get that overwhelming feeling of, oh, my gosh, I can't get anything done. That's like why that's why I have like five lists, six lists. Mm-hmm. It works better that way. But I'll have, I don't know about you, I'll start my day and like, these are the three things I want to get done. And at the end of the day, I like I got one done. <laughs> <laughs> I try to every day say, okay, you can't go to bed until you get this one thing done, right? Mm-hmm. And there I am at one o'clock in the morning. I'm not going to bed till I yeah. get this done. <laughs> How many times now? I don't know if it's happened to you, but it happens to me. <laughs> I'm sitting there typing, and I wake up, and there's like a whole page of the same letter. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wake up and my hands are on the keyboard and my head is over and you know, just kind of drooling a little drooling. bit. And <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. So I guess as we go through the show notes, if you see stuff like that, <laughs> if you see a whole sentence of the same letter, you know what happened. <laughs> oh, funny stuff. So yeah. in today's episode, we're going to be talking about cyber attacks and they will be getting worse in 2021. And no, that's not our prediction. <laughs> I think that's kind of a given. So we haven't done our predictions for 2021 yet, but um, I'm afraid of that after our 2020s. So why is we'll that? See. Yeah. So we need. Well, we also have to go back and do an episode reviewing what yeah. we talked about as far. Well, as that's not- why we replayed the 2020 predictions on Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Kind of a refresher, right? Of what we thought was going to happen before it became the dumpster fire that it is. <laughs> and uh yeah, it's an international dumpster fire and you rarely get those right? yeah i don't recall either of us landing on a pandemic Mm-mm. i don't think we even talked about no, uh, ele- no. election hacking but maybe i don't know <laughs> no no because really even that was are. even that was kind of a safe bet <laughs> you know everything you know no no yeah anyway so we'll have to have a Zen moment and figure out what we think is going to happen in 2021. But this, this mm. we're going to talk about today. It's not like a guess. It's kind of like, okay, you know, there's a rickety little bridge and you're going to drive a dump truck loaded with massive boulders over the rickety little bridge. What do you think is going to happen? Yeah. It, it's kind of like one of those you know, breach conversations. It's not mm-hmm. if it's going to happen, it's just how bad is it going to be? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we're going to take you through why that is so obvious to us. And, you know, I would love for us and a lot of people to be wrong. <laughs> yeah. That, that I don't really mind happens. being wrong when it's this scary stuff, but it, yeah, it does happen to me often, but <laughs> 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 all right. Uh. So for those of you who don't know, if you want to see our smiling faces, we are now on YouTube in real living color. So yeah. You can go to helpmewithhippa.com slash YouTube. It'll redirect you to our channel. Uh, we've always had the podcast there, but it's always been the audio version until recently. And now we have a yeah. video version of us recording the podcast, which is technically right? called a vodcast. <laughs> <laughs> right. But look, we've got this down. We can high five. I right. know. Check it out. No, I'm, 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 no, 
Was it this way? It was this way. <laughs> I don't know. I just got to get a. Um, I learned my way. You right. are the problem. Yeah. I, see, I got to get a sound though, so I can go. Yeah, there you go. We got to work that out. Yeah. So we'll get that. So we'll be doing some virtual high fives. We'll teach you how to use Zoom <laughs> to do virtual high fives. <laughs> because uh, you know, you know us. We got to got to improve on stuff all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's us. 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 Oh, okay. It's me. Yeah. <laughs> And it, it's just not always along. improve. You just got to play with toys. That's well, what it is. With everybody getting Zoom burnout, I'm like, we got to find our ways to make it more engaging. Let's figure out how to do high fives. Yeah, <laughs> I'm working on some stuff. We're gonna set it up. We're gonna like be like we're sitting side by side. I got I got an idea, but not yet. Yeah. Well, you know, most people do the high fives straight at the screen. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Like, no, no, uh, we're already beside each other. All I got to do is reach uh, over. <laughs> All right, let's knock this out because there's a lot of stuff. We already cut things. We already cut things. I know. I know. We will. And Yeah. So, all right, so we're going to dive right into it. Before we do, though, Hippo Boot Camp Virtual Edition, February 23, 24, 25. Find out more about that at thehippabootcamp.com. Better get signed up now. Mm -hmm. February will be here right after January. <laughs> 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 At least we can count on that, right? <laughs> yeah, we can count on that. Another thing we don't have to predict. I don't know, Another. though. These days, may, maybe not. Who yeah, knows? Yeah. We're going to make so. a big prediction. February comes after January. We're yeah. good. But after 2020, nobody's even willing to even say that. <laughs> All right. So. All right. All right. So before we get into everything else, let's hear a word from our sponsors. Did you know that 83% of healthcare organizations report a strong negative impact to their bottom line after a data breach? So many doctors think that they're HIPAA compliant and have nothing to worry about. Many of those organizations thought the same thing before it happened to them. Call Cardin today at 678-292-5001 so they can assess your practice and help ensure you are protected and prepared. Visit CardinHQ.com to learn more. Cybercrime is a multi-billion dollar industry and growing. How confident are you that your computer network can withstand a cyber attack? Can you afford to take the chance that what you have today will protect you? Call us and find out if the cybersecurity in your business is something you should be concerned about or if you can rest easy knowing your business is protected. Visit us online at securityfirstit.com. That's securityfirstit.com. And schedule a time to talk. All right, we are back. And uh, I guess we need to tell everybody to make sure to listen to the last episode of 2020. It is our annual blooper show. Yeah, because this is the last one of us doing normal stuff <laughs> for 2020. <laughs> if we do anything normal. Uh, and, you know, I have a shirt yeah. that says I'm not as normal as I first appear. Yeah. Yeah, so our, our blooper show, for those of you who don't know, we have an amazing editor that we've had almost since the beginning of the podcast yeah. years ago, and yeah. uh, we turn him loose <laughs> once a year because that's all we can take. We turn him loose <laughs> once a year, and we basically say, look, create a blooper show. It's all on you. Do what you want to yeah. do. And yeah. uh, and he he's always done a fantastic job of pulling in a lot of this dumb stuff that you guys don't hear. <laughs> That gets edited out. He puts all that together. He MCs the whole thing. So um, he's from Croatia. So you get to hear his uh, his Croatian Thick accent. Yeah, and, and on top of that, he ends, tries to be like Santa Claus or something usually. But <laughs> and he puts in sound effects and everything. He does a fantastic job. I think he enjoys it more than we do. <laughs> <laughs> but he still complains. I love yeah. that. <laughs> Yep, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so that'll be on Christmas Day, and then you'll hear new stuff from us that we've already moved from this week to that show because there was too much to cover on January 1st, 2021. Yep, yep. All right, you ready? Ready to yeah, get I into am. it? Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. All right, now Ooh. for the hip hop. Say what? Oh, too many. <laughs> too many buttons right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the hippos say what? 
episode. This is what happens. Yeah, it's 2020. If it's what. Um, okay. So uh, I was a little shocked because you don't see this very often, but in my inbox yesterday, there okay. might be some changes to HIPAA coming. Well, we talked about this a couple mm, of times. Yeah. In fact, often. We've mentioned that there was a discussion of those things happening, mm-hmm. and uh, so the the you know the process is the uh, notice of proposed rulemaking that goes out in the Federal Register, open for public comment for sixty days, and we got that notice yesterday that HIPAA changes are being proposed. Now, this is how this stuff works: is you propose it. They asked for comment of information. That happened this time last year. Now they're publishing, I don't remember how they named it, but you know this NPRM that uh, opened for public comment for 60 days from the date it is officially published in the Federal Register. I don't know what day that will be. And there's a lot of stuff in it. It just came out yesterday afternoon, did a quick review. We're moving that to the next episode so that we can cover that in better detail. But it's out there, folks. There's going to be changes. And guess what? Mm, what? Nothing for the security rule. Yeah. It's all privacy rule stuff, and it's not HIPAA going away. You mean Biden's not going to get rid of HIPAA? You know, everybody tries. <laughs> <laughs> uh, every time something happens, every time we have an election, people COVID, say the ink. Election. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Everybody yeah. thinks it's going to be gone. No, it's not. It, it's your right to privacy. Come on, people. And it's getting worse, which we're about to talk about. Mm, yep, we are. All right. So what have we said about medical devices and security? Yeah. Well, like a year ago, we did this whole bit about all these images out on the Internet, like a million of them mm-hmm. that were available on PAC systems. And we talked then about specifically in that imaging sector, if you will, of the healthcare industry, within that sub part, there are well-known problems with security on those devices and those applications. Right. Well, guess what? What? Ars Technica posts a big thing. By the way, GE, it turns out, so if you have any GE imaging equipment, look into this. They use a default password for maintenance Mm. that's publicly available. (laughs) Well, this gets into uh, risk analysis and vetting vendors and looking into things. Never assume. You know, you ask GE if there's, oh, yeah, we got it. But, Mm. you know, this is on GE, you know? Mm -hmm. This is on them. And to make it even worse, they're like, well, this is going to be hard for us to patch. (laughs) And really hard for us to do, which is probably why they hadn't done it. They were just waiting to get caught. You know, there's that balance of what's it going to cost versus how we're going to get caught. Right. (laughs) That's what a lot of people make decisions on. I'm not saying I know they do. But Uh, it's possible that uh, that has been going on at some level or somebody just didn't tell somebody. Mm -hmm. Let's just assume whatever it is. You would think, oh, my word, let's solve this immediately. No. Yeah. I think they'll find some person and be like, this is the guy that didn't tell us. Yeah. <laughs> Here's your golden parachute. Bus. Yeah. <laughs> Here's your golden parachute as we throw you under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the problem is that they don't have a way to roll out like a patch or a fix. They're not sure when they'll do that. But if you take the time to understand that you have a pretty big security vulnerability sitting on your network and call them, they'll do it for you. Mm -hmm. But that's how many people know that other than, you know, the people that read that nerd news and listen to us. Right. So we're going to, you know, try to educate all of our clients and, and let them know, you know, hey, this is a thing you should evaluate. But you got to call them. you got to call their support and specifically say, I want you to change this, you know, default password thing. Your call is important to us. Please wait. <laughs> you are number 125,000 in the queue. 
Uh, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm really important to you, all right? <laughs> uh, but here's the thing that people don't understand is, let's say an attacker gets into the network, but they, they can't manage to get into a device and they find one of those. Mm. Hackers will tell you that, that you can go in and look for a printer and establish like a beachhead on a printer that has a default password. So that's why we always ask about default passwords. Mm -hmm. And you can sit there on the printer and watch the traffic and do things. Well, this is the same kind of thing. They, they can get this level and they're using it for maintenance. So, you know, it's got a lot of power. Right. And they can like find that machine in a quick scan. Boom. It's going to flag real quick. Here's the default admin ID, hop in there and sit and watch the traffic. And from there, I can launch attacks. It's, a, it's their beachhead. Mm -hmm. So that is the concern. And everybody's like, well, it's behind my secure network. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's literally a Trojan horse in there. So anyway, if you have GE imaging devices, look into this. Post haste. Yes, you should. Absolutely. Give them a yeah, call. And we'll have a link to the article in Ars Technica on the show notes for you. All right. That's our, uh, <laughs> our special section of the day. <laughs> yes. Uh, as uh, HIPAA say, what continues? HIPAA say, you know, breach notifications are required. And we went through this period of alerts about COVID phishing scams, COVID malware, false websites. And then, of course, the big one of a ransomware attacks aimed at healthcare. We've mm -hmm. had all of those last X number of months, right? Right. So 60 days <laughs> from where you start hearing about those, you will start seeing uh, announcements of uh, data breaches. And, uh, you know, only a few hundred times do you have to hear there's a data breach things happening before you realize, oh, wait, somebody's going to have to announce those mm -hmm. in 60 days. Yeah. So sure enough, we're starting to see it. Yeah. You know. And I'm I'm a firm believer in however many you see, you can probably multiply that by a hundred. <laughs> well, at least ten. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking a bunch. Just yeah, just because it's possible. Just because I personally know so many times where people are like, um, I'll think about it. Mm -hmm. And I'm then like, they no. never get back to you. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah, we'll get that done. Yeah. And they're not reporting; mm -hmm. it's self-reporting. So, I mean, I think uh, the number the number is massively higher. I, um, I know where I've been called about. You know, can you consult with us on this breach? And then I ask them a few questions, and I said, "Well, you've got to prepare to notify." Blah blah blah. And then I never hear back from them, and I never see. Mm -hmm. And you know, I I don't know. I can't track them all down. I don't have the resources to make this podcast work barely. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm having uh, that conversation right now with uh, with a. It's not even a client yeah. of mine, but yeah, I mean they're hi they hired us to come in to do this this piece. But yeah, we're having that conversation now, <laughs> and it's funny how how much time and energy they put into trying to tell you it's not PHI. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of effort yeah I'm like <laughs> when, you, when you when you're spending that much time to do that it should tell you right away so we had uh, a big one that uh, dental care alliance down in florida which is tons of dentist offices you know the ones that it's not going to happen to us we're very secure you know we've been saying for years that you know dental is some of the ones that are the least concerned Mm -hmm. about the things they're supposed to be concerned about. Yeah. So they're notifying this is like a big, you know, management entity where there's all these different practices involved. Right. And they're apparently notifying over a million patients. Ooh. That's going to be costly. Yeah. Yeah. But you want to talk about costly? Yes. I do want to talk about costly. <laughs> when I saw this, I was like, "What?" I know. So there's <laughs> well, I, I know. I, was, <laughs> I just did this, I did a double take. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> what did she say? <laughs> Surely I can't be right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And it just gets worse. And, and I mean, at first I'm like, you know, 
no way. And then the more you read it, you're like, oh, holy crap. I mean, mm. it's it's terrifying to to read this thing. But the headline was cyber attack cost UVM Medical Center one point five million a day. Yeah. A day. Mm. A day. Mm. They were hit in October and they're still not back, you know, where they are. Uh, they haven't confirmed it was one of those ones that were uh, a, a ransomware attack. They haven't confirmed anything about the attack. They've been talking about the recovery. And they've mentioned that the FBI came in and worked on the investigation. So you have to assume. But here's the bad thing. They got hit on the day that the FBI thing came out. On <laughs> the day that it came out. Man. Yeah. That's just... It's too bad. It's too bad. Sad. What are you going to do? Yeah. But this is uh, when when you read. It, okay. So this is an interview. It's a Vermont, University of Mont, Vermont Medical Center. And the president of some part of it is in this interview. It is a Vermont News at organization, not sure. I don't recall which one off the top of my head. But they're interviewing the president, and they said uh, he uh, he called that a back of the envelope number, one point five million. <laughs> and um, and he said, get this though, that's just the cost. It doesn't cover the cost of the system getting back up and running. It doesn't yeah. cover any of the recovery things. It covers the cost of the downtime. Oh, man. And That's crazy. I know. I'm like, and it, he's saying, I mean, so you got to figure it's at least double per day in some cases, on some mm -hmm. days. You know, other days it's, you know, two million, two, but it's up there. And the thing is, is this was October 28th. They were hit, and this article was like this week, I want to say. They aren't fully operational yet. Like, there's yeah. cancers care they can't do yet and they mention a lot of the imaging services being the ones that they're bringing back on mm -hmm. i'm just saying i wonder if they're ge mm -hmm. um <laughs> i don't know but here's when you know it's bad when you have a cyber attack and they call in the national guard mm-hmm they called in the Vermont National Guard okay. to help them go around and work with every workstation. Because that's what you got to do in a lot of these cases. Wow. Yeah. It can't be good when mm -mm. you have to call the National Guard. I mean, yeah, I can you imagine? It's just like you're the IT guy. I would like to call the National Guard, bring them in for some <laughs> IT help. <laughs> Well, I mean, we talk, all, we talk all the time about we're all in the middle of a cyber war. Whether you know it or not, you're slap dab in the middle of a cyber war. Yeah. I think that's and it, pretty And yeah, it's getting worse. Uh, the evident. nation state, it, they said these attacks were nation state attacks. So, yeah. And, and here's, this is one of the things that the hospital, the president that they're interviewing, he had initially predicted it would take days, not weeks, to restore the hospital system. Hmm. Yeah, and then they're bringing in, let's see, the National Guard to help clean and restore 5,000 workstations and laptops. And, by the way, they've had to temporarily, temporarily furlough or reassign 300 people because they don't have work for them to do because they're so busy recovering. It's like the stuff you can work with doesn't work right now. Mm -hmm. So we need you to do all of this. But here was the uh, right in the middle of this article was the thing that I thought was quite, you know, the 1.5 million got my attention, but this is the nugget that I think that everyone should hear. And the quote was, if you told me more than a month after this attack, we still would have functions that weren't normal, I would have bet you that you'd be wrong. We really did not anticipate the scope or the impact the attack had on our system and how far-reaching it was. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where we talk about security risk analysis, security risk analysis, security risk analysis. And ransomware attack is, you know, critical 
that's the kind of damage you need to classify that as destructive completely to the ground destructive and then build up from there. Right. And yeah. clearly he would have bet that you were wrong. How many times is he going to hear that, David? Yeah. And there's probably somebody that was in IT going to try to tell him. And <laughs> <laughs> try to tell him. Yeah, Security I, I mean, officer, all, compliance officer. It's all the time, really, because mm-hmm. – and I'm not saying it happened here, but people tend to fall into that. It won't happen to me scenario uh-huh. or they'll, you know, they, they won't think it'll be that bad or we have things in place or whatever, but they don't test them out, whatever the case might be. But you know, this, this article speaks to a lot of things. It speaks to the fact that the costs are almost always a lot more than people anticipate. The time to recover is almost always more than they anticipate. Right. It's like everything everything that you think it's going to be is multiplied by a lot more well, and than the you breadth, anticipate. How much it impacts, the width of the damage. Right. That it it really you don't realize just how much everything's interconnected until everything that's interconnected gets hit. Right. So it's totally, you know, a mess. But I thought that that whole thing about I would have bet you you were wrong. And started to say, and and began by saying, confidently saying, days, not weeks. And here they are, you know, almost two months out, you know, six weeks out when uh, the article, you know, is being talked about. So there you have it. That's, uh, you know, they still have to deal with notifications and all of that other kind of stuff. But in this case, yes, HIPAA says you have to notify, but more importantly, HIPAA says you need to seriously consider the full impact of those threats that you're up against on your security risk analysis. And in today's world, in healthcare, if you don't have a security risk analysis that lists ransomware as very likely to occur, if not almost certain, let's call it very likely, Mm -hmm. and, you know, actual critical level of damage so that it is a critically high item on your risk analysis, then you're not doing the HIPAA risk analysis right. I agree. I agree. Well, at least it's the two of us. Yeah. And just so the listeners know, we haven't even got into the... (laughs) The attack's getting worse in 2021. Piece, I know. Yeah. We're, about to hit, we're about to tell you now. Those are things that are happening in 2020. Now let's tell you why it's going to get worse. Uh, it's like, uh, really? It can get worse? Yes. Potentially a lot worse. So mm-hmm. first, the thing that I was going to talk about, right, was this report from Black Book. And, and it's one of those things I think, you know, you have to pay to be a vendor. I, I don't know the whole deal. There's vendors in there. Mm-hmm. It's all about, you know, healthcare stuff. They do market research for these vendors and then tell you how awesome the vendors are that they have done this market research for. <laughs> Is it paid market research? Uh, I, you know, that they don't, they get paid to do the research. Yes, I'm sure. Anyway, this survey is specifically about cybersecurity and healthcare. And it's they call it the 2020 state of the cybersecurity, you know, industry, healthcare, something, something, something. Mm-hmm. <sighs> this came out in November. Okay. So very recent. And just hadn't had a chance to cover it. We've been a little busy on our episodes. Here's some nuggets from this report. of health systems, hospitals, physician organizations report their infrastructure are unprepared to respond to an attack. 73%. Uh, And that's health systems, hospitals, physicians, organizations. Not the big ones, not the little. It's all of them. The results estimated 1,500 healthcare providers are vulnerable to data breaches of 500 or more, representing a 300 hundred percent increase year over year from 2019 Mm. okay that 300 percent increase so you might want to think things are going to get worse then they also surveyed uh, roughly 2500 security professionals from 705 700 705 provider organizations to say what do you think's going on out there? <laughs> you know, what makes you, I think they use the term, what is it? Proverbial sitting ducks. 
Oh, quack. okay. <laughs> quack. 96% oh. of these uh, 2,500, 96%. Of these IT professionals agreed with the sentiments that data attackers are outpacing their medical enterprises, holding providers at a disadvantage in responding to vulnerabilities. I would worry about the 4% that didn't agree with that. (laughs) No. Uh, And, of course, we have, uh, you know, we know COVID's made all this worse. COVID Mm -hmm. is contributing to these insane numbers. And... They do make a point of saying that, you know, there's this huge shift to work from home. And, but they also point out that while they did that, you know, they're dealing with all of this. You got the surge in security risk. You got everybody working from home. And then um, 90% of the employees that shifted to work at home, according to this survey, sort of, boy, I'm having a problem today. (laughs) Survey. (laughs) Survey. (laughs) Survey. (laughs) <laughs> did not receive any updated guidelines or training in on the increasing risk of accessing sensitive patient data compromising systems. Yeah, I mean, I've, we know that. Yeah, I've seen that personally where, you, you know, did you have a work from home policy? And most of the time, no, but some did. But the work from home policy wasn't. The, it wasn't the work from home that they're doing. It was more like, right. well, if this person needs to work from home, they can this way, but not yeah. with the entire workforce or most <laughs> exactly. of the workforce. You know, it's very different. Right. <laughs> yeah. And we're all doing telehealth from home and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Further down, though, a bit further down, uh, 82% of uh, the information officers and information security officers in Q3, so... Just yep. finished. Agree that the dollars spent currently have not been allocated prior to their tenure effectively. Now, it's not happening under me. It happened under the other guy. <laughs> Often only spent after there were breaches. Mm-hmm. Yep. And without a full gap assessment of capabilities led by senior management outside of IT. Yeah. This is another problem we see when something does happen. They have a knee-jerk response to it, and they just start throwing things at yeah. what they perceive to be the problem. Because <laughs> uh-huh. most of the time, they're not even addressing the problem; they're addressing the symptom or the specific thing that happened. So, well, yeah, it, it's that whole "we've got a show, we take this seriously, we're going to invest a bunch of money in it." Boom. Yeah, and and it, I know we're talking about technology, but oftentimes that's all they do is throw technology at it, and we're like, no, and th- that's not where the problem is. We know that. <laughs> You can't fix it with just technology. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here's uh, 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 the last bit of this uh, <laughs> study before we get to telling you why it's going to get worse. Because <laughs> we're not a, even there yet. No, no, it's a doom and gloom episode. <laughs> uh, only 14% of hospitals and 6, 6% of physician organizations believe a 2021 assessment of their cybersecurity will show improvement from 2020. Wow. 26% of provider organizations believe that their cybersecurity position has worsened wow. as compared to 3% in every other industry. That's not good. So as the problem increases, <laughs> your cybersecurity is decreasing? That's yeah. Not good. Well, I mean, COVID is impacting healthcare, and all those people that are worrying about your mask and all this. You know what? It's your healthcare system that this is about. Mm-hmm. It's the people that you expect that when you have a heart attack, you can go there and get care and save your life. Yeah. It's that simple. It well, is rem- not about anything else but that need. I remember when the whole response first started happening to COVID and everybody, you know, wash your hands and wear the mask and social distance. And, you know, especially the whole wash your hands thing, it was just preaching, wash your hands, wash your hands, hygiene, Mm -hmm. hygiene, hygiene. I was, and I remember saying, maybe even on the podcast, but I was like, if people would take cyber hygiene as serious as they take this, dude, we would be, we'd be... (laughs) Doing a whole lot better off. <laughs> yeah, but you got to be careful there because here's the thing. They were taking it serious in March and April. 
Mm -hmm. But then they decided it was not necessary. It was inconvenient. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, which is my point. You see the same flow. It's it's following the same path. Cyber Mm -hmm. hygiene, cybersecurity, whatever you want to call it. It's following the same path that people take in real life. They jump on the bandwagon when something happens, Mm -hmm. right? We're taking this seriously. We're doing all this stuff. And then after a while, it's like, oh, well, it's not as necessary anymore. They they drop their level of cybersecurity or security awareness or whatever, hygiene. Uh, and it just goes to a lull. And eventually, it just goes away altogether. And then you'll even hear people go, well, I'm just not sure that ransomware is even a threat anymore. <laughs> is it a real thing? I'm not sure. <laughs> it's a hoax. <laughs> yeah, it's a hoax. Ask it's the all people political. trying to get care <laughs> trying to get care in Vermont if that's it. You know? Yeah, yeah. This whole you know. this whole uh, this whole ransomware thing is just a political thing. <laughs> but it, it yeah. is. It's it's kind of it's funny. The same and, fight. Yeah, it's funny that it, it follows the same path, and and people still and have it's the, the same result. We're trying to protect the healthcare yeah. <laughs> infrastructure so they can provide care. Hmm. To the public. Yep. It's still about patient care, no matter how you yeah. twist it. Yeah. But, the, you know, the people just don't, you know. So, <laughs> anyway. So let's talk about why it's going to get worse. <laughs> <laughs> why, Donna, will it get worse? <laughs> There's a fire in my eye. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's... Uh, fire in the hole. <laughs> All that kind of stuff. We we know that back in 2016, we still see that as a marker of when things really changed and things, mm-hmm. cyber attacks really took off and became part front, of your daily breakfast, right? Yeah, front, big uh, front page news. <laughs> <laughs> that started in 2016. Ironically, that's also when a hacking group called the Shadow Brokers stole the NSA's hacking tools and started publishing them and selling them. Yeah. Yeah. So great, great I'm, not, for hackers. I'm not saying, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying hacking. they go together. Just maybe want to think about that when we go into the next piece. Now it's not like, you know, the NSA level of security is way big. Uh, they were literally trying to uh, attack because that's their job. Mm-hmm. But one of the top, Cybersecurity vendors, I guess, in the world. Yeah. Called FireEye. And we're talking tons of governments use them, major companies use them. They're very well known. And they announced this week that they were hit and the hackers stole all of their pen testing tools. Mm. What this means is that these are the people that the governments and the big companies hire to try and see if they can break in. Right. You know, they're the ones, you know, you hear on Darknet Diaries interviews and stuff. (laughs) And, you know, Jack's getting them to tell them some scary stuff that they do to break in, and they have all these tools. Mm Mm-hmm. Hackers took those tools. Oh, boy. Now, the good news, the folks at FireEye, they're being somewhat transparent because they came out and flat out said it and they didn't try to hide it as soon as possible. Yeah. Because you, you, the clock's a ticking at this point because mm-hmm. you don't know. They believe it was a nation state attack, right. but that's it. That's all we know. They've published the tools on GitHub and 300, 300 things that you can do to what was the the uh, countermeasures was the word they used countermeasures three hundred countermeasures and uh, there's also a list of uh, sixteen bugs that patches that are available that people need to make sure they have and you know frankly in the statement from the CEO of FireEye they said we are not sure if the attacker intends to use our red team tools or to publicly disclose them. Nevertheless, out of an abundance of caution, we've heard that one before. (laughs) We have developed more than 300 countermeasures for our customers and the community at large to use to minimize the potential impact of the theft of these tools. Yeah, but we can't get people to, to update firmware. On the on a product, <laughs> how are we going to get them to 
<laughs> yeah. Followed 300 different things. But, you know, and but I mean, again, these are like for security professionals to do. Yeah. Not yeah. like IT help desk. This is for security <laughs> professionals. In their spare time. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, by the way, one of the things in the Black Book Report, it went on and on about is the lack of skilled professionals that understand truly how to do security. Yeah. It's it's a and problem. How hard it is. Yeah. It's a problem. Well, yeah, I mean, it's 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 not getting better. No. And people were, you know, sounding the alarm about it two years ago. We have a potential three million shortage coming in like twenty twenty one, I think, or two is when they said. So here we are. Yeah. Shortage is still here. And it doesn't help that there are so many vendors out there that are even telling the IT community that all you have to do is buy this and do this. It, it's <laughs> very similar to the the whole HIPAA thing, right? All you have to do is all you got to do is all you got to do is this. Just you know, check the box. But I I see that all the time in the cybersecurity piece too. It's like if you just buy our tool, if you just purchase our stack, if you just do this, and I'm like, okay, but. Yeah, they know how to run the tools, but they still don't understand the deep parts of cybersecurity. They're not mm -hmm. a cybersecurity professional. They just mm -hmm. are dabbling in it. And yeah. we've talked about that in a, in a previous podcast of how you just need to know where your core information and knowledge stops. And you need to right. look at, you know, bringing in somebody who understands these things. And it amazes me how many people say, well, I understand forensics. I understand this. I understand that. And then when you start talking to them, it's all stuff that they're outsourcing to somebody who says they got it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's like, golly. <laughs> yeah. So it's a problem. Yeah. It's a problem. Indeed. And it is not going to, I mean, even if you think about going out to third quarter 2021, these 300 countermeasures and 16 patches. Just the 16 mm. patches. Let's not even talk about the countermeasures. Let's just talk about the 16 patches. Right. What's the likelihood that the vast majority of people who need them today will have them by then? Not many. Mm -mm. Yeah. And then you take the smaller organizations, let's say, you know, they have an, let's say they have a break fix IT guy or an MSP. Mm -hmm. They're relying on that IT guy or MSP to know this. <laughs> yes. And to do something with it. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. and that, then that goes right back to the conversation we just had. The IT guy, the MSP, probably can't do these things, or they don't have time to do these things. Mm -hmm. And so they won't get done. And so all these smaller organizations, even the medium-sized organizations, possibly they're just never going to happen. And, and we may not know openly what they're doing with these tools. You know, it depends a lot on if they figure out what the nation state is, right? Mm -hmm. If it's, you know, North Korea, they're well known for using the tools and selling them because they need the money. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's Iran, Iran, or as they say in the South, Iran, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Iran and Iraq. But if it's in the Middle East, I mean, the Iranians are a big problem for us. And mm -hmm. I don't think people really realize what's going on in that cyber war. Right. And that, so who knows? And, and that fire eye has done so much with governments. You would think that they use these tools and then they fix those problems with their clients. Right. Okay. And then they make sure their clients have it fixed. What about yeah. everybody else? <laughs> yeah, they, they probably come out and said, well, I, mean, I know they didn't do this, but it would be like, <laughs> if you're a client of ours, you're good. Everybody else, you're in trouble. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, so we don't know. We may not know. Shadow Brokers came out and said, we're selling this. Mm -hmm. You know, that doesn't mean everybody else will, and they can still sell it. And they could, you know, create their own. Here's what your I envision is they'll take that because those are red team tools. They're designed to find ways into networks, mm -hmm. and they will create a red team. And that red team, we just talked about, you know, with Eric about what if, well, going back to the Vermont thing, what if that happened in a group, a region where all the healthcare providers were hit the same way right. in that region and it was a COVID hotspot? Mm. Can you even comprehend 
the impact that would have. Yeah, it'd be a mess. You know, and they they weren't in a, a COVID hotspot at the time. They only had like six COVID patients when this happened. But imagine if your ICU is full, like a lot of places. I'm watching the map, monitoring hospitalization. That's the thing I've been monitoring all along. Hospitalization is what matters is the impact to what we do. You know, you have a ton of sick people, but if they're all in the hospital, that's when it really drags the healthcare system down. Mm-hmm. And it's our healthcare system is not designed for this. It is right. not built for this at all. It's built to be full of patients that are paying for things, you know, specialized surgeries, elective things, not emergency things. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's just crushing to so much. And you add that the University of Vermont, you add in the one point five million per day for six weeks. Anyway, so uh, yeah. that's so, almost as much as, as you make. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe before I die, but um, <laughs> it in in what he was talking about, you know, it was that whole thing of what is the intent of these attackers and trying to stay a, ahead of them is is almost impossible. You know, mm-hmm. everything we've just gone through tells you. And then let's not forget the massive Equifax breach occurred because something wasn't patched and it was like four months behind being patched. Four months. Yep. It's going to be a mess. Yeah. So they could take and do the nation state stuff, but they could also start selling the things they find that they decide they don't want. And that's the other parts we covered with Eric. So they're aimed potentially at shutting down an entire region healthcare during a covid uh outbreak mm. that that's one thing and there would be great deal of value in both criminal enterprise as well as nation state to hurt the united states then you have well we found our way into this we don't see it gives us value towards our intent so now we're going to sell it to somebody else who will then package it up and resell it and package it up and resell it so that, that those people are hit by just the criminal enterprise. Yeah. Yep. You may even see the uh, cyber attack as a service offer some of these things. Yeah. I, I think that there's a, a great possibility that, you know, they're already hired, a, you know, cyber assassins, so to speak. They're hired guns out there all over the place. I mean, if you wanted to make sure that someone's life became miserable you could hire somebody to use social engineering and these hacking kind of tools and make them disappear, make them become somebody they're not. I mean, mm-hmm. you could do so many things, and you could just hire somebody to do it. And as you describe that, most listeners had somebody in mind. <laughs> I know you did, and I know who it was. <laughs> wow. Hmm. <laughs> That could be that could be useful here. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it is absolutely impossible to even imagine that all of these things that we were talking about up to all of those things came out and happened before this thing. Mm. So I can't imagine. We were already know, you know, we knew going in it was going to be worse. Right. But the the potential this has because there's so much unknown and there's so much capability, it's uh it's pretty you know, that's why uh it, buckle up. <laughs> yeah. Buckle up, buttercup. Yeah, it's going to be a uh, rough ride. <laughs> I it was like uh what was it? the uh Full of potholes. 2020, we were riding on a road full of potholes. Mm -hmm. Right? That will feel like a freshly paved street compared to what 2021 could become. (laughs) Thanks, Donna. Thanks. (laughs) 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 Just as I think I'm putting all the bad behind me, you tell me the worst is yet to come. (laughs) I know. You know, I'm always one of those ones, plan for the worst, hope for the best. (laughs) So you have to plan for 2021 to be worse. Than yeah. 2020. Hopefully, it's an anomaly, not a um, 
new way of life. Right. Yep. So I mean, yes, we know we're changed forever. Mm -hmm. But how much is that change? You know, let's let's not make it where every day somebody's shut down completely. Yeah. I wonder how many people are going, we're going back to pencil and paper. <laughs> and you try that, go ahead, try it. Yeah. You know? I've, I've had people say that to me. We're just going yeah. back to paper charts. I'm like, why don't we do this? I was like, go ahead, try it. Just try yeah. it. Yeah. Particularly in healthcare, how are you going to get paid? Yeah. You because know, that's it. And how Apple many pie. patients can actually pay that way? I mean, that's the way you used to get paid, you know. The local doctors and stuff. Mm -hmm. Be like, can you just bring me an apple pie next time you in town? <laughs> we'll call it even. <laughs> it's funny because we just had a we just had a doctor pass away here in town, and he was probably in his nineties. And so many people coming out of the woodwork, and they're like, "Yeah, when I was a kid," and these people are like sixty or seventy. When I was a kid, he treated our whole family and didn't charge us anything, and you know, we would just bring him cookies or, you know, whatever. There's all these yeah. little, you know, bartering things that they would do just because it was the small town, you know, doctor. Mm -hmm. But no, that's, I don't think that's a thing anymore. No, no, <laughs> not so much. I mean, there it was is, no <laughs> but I don't think HIPAA impacted it as much as, you know, insurance yeah. impacted it. Right. So there's a lot of things. I, I mean, I remember I went to a doctor and it was on a street. Now, the street was basically just this a paved section in my small town of Dahlonega back then. Tiny little street. I mean, like you kind of had to inch over to go past each other. Kind of. Mm -hmm. And there was the doctor's office. And you walked out of the doctor's office and walked across this little street to the pharmacy. So you'd go see Dr. Woodward and then go over to Pete's. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, Pete was the pharmacist. Everybody knew Pete. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's it's a different world by far, and the changes in the world today are impacted by technology. So they're rapid, and I mm -hmm. think that's a lot of the things that people miss. So yep. there you go. We're closing out 2020 right here. Yeah, I, I'm done. I don't want to hear no uh, more. Yeah, <laughs> we're you know go. we're just gonna keep the faith. Yeah, plan I'm, for the I'm, best, best, and uh, plan for the worst, and hope for the best. Woo, plan for the best, it. and hope for the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know That's about what you. Too but many I'm, people do. I'm going to buy some toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've learned that if there's it. a ransomware attack, everybody has to use the bathroom. <laughs> 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 Maybe buy some alcohol too, and I'm not talking about the rubbing <laughs> kind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, yeah. The brown water that comes in a bottle. Yeah, that's what I like. Yep. So, uh, well, anyway, I'm glad 2020 is over. <laughs> <laughs> At least not officially, but officially for us, <laughs> it's over. <laughs> yeah. Who knows what we'll be talking about in two weeks? Yeah. January 1st is two weeks from the time this comes out. So, wow. Yeah, Crazy. hard to believe, but yeah. really glad to just put a pin in it, put a fork in it. It's done. Put a fork in it. <laughs> it's burnt. Oh, yeah. It's slapped. Burnt. Yeah, you can't, you probably couldn't get a fork in it. No, can't get a fork in it. It's all right. <laughs> all right, folks, that's our show for today. Remember to follow us and share us out on your favorite social media site. Check us out on YouTube, and you can share that out so you can see. All the beauty that comes from the camera. <laughs> <laughs> we have to do a lot of makeup before we get on here. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you rate us in our podcast. And app. We, as always, we need your help to spread the word. Give us reviews. We love them. Absolutely. Love the reviews. Keep them coming. And uh, I think there's there's still a, a push to get me to wear a dress. So if you want to donate to <laughs> that cause, let us know. <laughs> And, uh, uh, and don't, don't forget the Hippo Boot Camp at thehippobootcamp.com. It's coming up in February. You need to get signed up today. So for Donna and myself, remember the HIPAA is not about compliance. It's about patient care. You've been listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, hosted by Donna Grendel and David Sims. The show created to help you with HIPAA. 
for more information or to ask us a question, visit our website at helpmewithhipaa.com. Neither Donna Grendel or David Sims are attorneys, and they do not offer binding legal advice concerning regulatory compliance. The information in this podcast should not be relied upon or construed as legal advice in any way. Consult your attorney for legal advice concerning compliance with HIPAA regulations.